Well, morning, Dave. Nice morning, chilly Mark. morning in Bathurst, mate. Isn't it? So here we are. So we're up at um, Bathurst. We're behind uh, the pitch straight, and Dave's been pretty much the main organiser this year with through a club, I guess. Yeah, the Falcon GT Owners Club in New South Wales. We've done this in uh, conjunction with another club, the Grand Tour Muscle Car Club. It's uh, so big job, mate. Biggest car show I've ever organised, that's for sure. I don't think a lot of people understand how much work it takes to bring this sort of event together. Yeah. Um, so what, 12, 18 months planning? Just on two years. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, crazy. There so was. how many cars we got? 423, it's turned out. Well, wow, that's amazing, isn't it? So I'm going to get around and, and obviously shoot some footage of all of that mm. and um, maybe chat to some few owners and stuff. But um, it's good to be up here at Bathurst and there's nothing like that feeling of driving in on pit straight. I had to do a lap. Yeah, you, that's the, yeah, that, that's the mandatory lap. thing to yep. do when you arrive, isn't it? Yeah, so we're going to get a look around. So thanks for having us, mate. No worries, mate. Thanks and, for coming. Um, hopefully we put on a good show for you. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Cheers. Well, if you love GT Falcons, today is the day because I'm lucky enough to get up there and record all of the cars, or I think all of the cars. When I looked through the footage, I thought, how am I going to do this justice? So I actually rang Dave that you are just listening to then, and Dave's with me today to help me go through all of these cars and talk about what he got up to and I got up to at the event. Um, welcome, Dave. Thanks, Howard. So, mate, lots of cars. Yeah, many, many cars. Huge weekend. And um, obviously you'd be in a bit of a, um, a lull now after such a big event. I'll tell you, really, it did take its toll. Well, you'll have to excuse my voice, I'm a bit croaky. Yeah, I mean, it's, and it's non-stop, isn't it? Non-stop. So, mate, what I've done is I've tried to get lawyers to put these in a run so they've pretty much run through the models. Mm. And what I was impressed about was there was a good showing in, in right through the models. Mm. Everything was represented, that's for sure. Yeah. So. I was talking to someone the other day, a lot of people didn't realise that all the XRs are, are all gold. There's about five different golds in this line, but they're all gold. <laughs> they're all gold. And it, and it's it's really interesting when, you know, they're all lined up and you go, oh, all gold GTs, but they've all got a little bit of character. Mm. Because, um, so what were they, 67? Yep, the 67 XRs. Yeah, so they're getting on in age now. Definitely. And... Um, over the years, they've all had the little tweaks, and it's something that a lot of people don't realise. Because this is a GT Nationals, and it's all about concourse, um, a lot of the judging here all is about trying to get these cars back as they were produced from the factory. Mm. Well, we've got categories that can cater for guys who have modified their cars a little bit as well. Uh, but I'm starting to notice with the XRs that we've got here, most of them have gone for the original restored or maintained category. Yeah, I think there was one there with a, a little Paxton or something on it. Yep. But um, just a classic car, and I mean, at my age, they were not that old on the road when I first got my license. Mm. And of course, then they went to XT, mm. and there was some really cool colours. And this particular one, um, that's the candy red, I think, yep. isn't it? Candy apple yep. red. So yep. candy apple red, really nice white one. Polar. And. Um, so they were still Windsors, so they were 289. These ones are up to the 302 Windsor. Right. That's got itself a nice set of yeah. carbies on it. That's a bit of a um, classic look, isn't it? That yeah. side by side with a couple of four barrels on it. Now I always say to people, when you see the camera go up and down like that, it's me trying to dodge people. <laughs> so I got in early and got all of the phase threes and stuff um, when they were still setting up. Mm. And then this is about 11 o'clock and the crowd really come in pretty strong. Yeah, we had 1,500 people over the bridge. That's excellent. Yeah, pretty happy with that. Yep. So we're going to donate that money to charity too, which is a good thing. Yeah, I see that you had some charity auctions and stuff going, because for mm. you guys it was like a four-day event, wasn't it? Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Two days of scrutineering, show for one day, and then the super sprint on the Sunday. Yeah, I, so I just went up for the sad day, and... Um, come home and then got lawyers to put this together. So we now go into the XWs and of mm. course XW, some were like the earlys were Windsor and then they That's went right. over the Clevos. And I see you've yeah. actually had a separate section for Windsor. Mm. Then there's the sign, that was good timing. And then the Clevos as well. Yeah. And a lot of people are starting to know, but I worked in spare parts. Oh, right. When the XA come out. Yep. And it was really quite confusing when someone came in with an XWXY, you had to go mm. out and get the number off the tag on the engine yep, yep. because 
water pumps were on different side. I think the yeah. Windsors, there was two different Windsors used in the XWs. There, there was um, the one that the, the Windsor Cleveland differentiation made them a bit of a odd. I think there was some, there was a, a, a bit of a run of engines though that were either from Canada or somewhere else where the water pump ran the opposite. There's some really weird stuff in, in those models um, that when I worked in spares, you just mm. couldn't go, oh, it's an XW302 or an XW351. You actually mm. had to go and check off the tag what it was. Yeah, it's one of those cars that ran over a transition period. So these are obviously all, all in a line mm. and then but inside, there's other people that took the opportunity to grab a garage and, mm. and put them up in the air, and we'll get to those later on in the video. So um, these guys are all basically contesting for um, the restored section, as you said, the modified, and the one we're looking at now has um, had a little bit done to it. Yeah, that looks like it could have been a contemporary vehicle, which is another category that we had. So that's modified, but in the old style? Yeah, it's got period, um, modifications made to it that aren't, they don't require engineering, so. Right, okay. So a bit like you can put it back. Yep. Yeah. Yep. What I class a resto mod. Yeah, the bolt-ons. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, there was a lot of um, original cars there. So mm. uh, what, what's the terminology you guys use? So unrestored? Yeah, unrestored or original restored. So that, that's, especially the unrestored cars, they're the ones that we love to see. They're the other ones that teach us about. Well, I mean, the opportunity to see cars that aren't molested now. I mean, when mm. I got my panel van, was a bit of a classic. It's got 50,000 Ks on it. Still had the original brake pads and, and <laughs> the rotor go, button yeah. and all, you know, like the whole distributor still had the original leads. Mm. Those opportunities are coming less and less now, aren't they? Exactly. It's Mark Barraclough's car. He's the chief judge. That's a really interesting car. I was going to say that should be fairly right then. Yeah, it's a bit it is. Yeah. <laughs> and right. he's talking about the judges here though, and it was funny because the yeah. guys are all there and there's the, one of the publics got their head in with the judges, I think, yeah. trying to have a bit of a listen. The judge goes, mate, can you just give us a bit of room? Yeah. Like, yeah. They've got all these cars to judge in a short period of time. Yeah, I mean, I can see the public's point of view. It's really interesting to get in there and have a look, but it doesn't make it easy for the judges. That's a very unique... Um, Colour, is that a Rothmans? Um, no, that's a, I think it's called Mist Blue. That's owned by a guy called Peter Paulson and it's paint code is spec. No, so a lot of people sort of think, you know, this guy should paint the car the correct colour one day, but it's... That is. That is the correct yeah. colour for it. And I mean, when one. you look through the amount of corporate colours through all the Falcons, mm. it's quite amazing. I was looking um, at something the other day for someone and, and, you know, there's 20 or 30 corporate colours in the A's and B's especially. Yeah, that's right. I thought this, I'm pretty sure this guy's, you know, they're going flat out. Yeah, and I was and I'm pretty say, sure yeah. his mate said to him, that's what you get for driving it. So yeah. they obviously drove it either, you know, yesterday or drove it, I don't know if they would have drove it there. That's what it's all about. Like he's under his car cleaning something that you can't normally see anyway. Yeah. For, for the judges before they arrive. Yeah. Reminds me of the old panel van days when we used to drive, <laughs> drive our van to the show and spend all day Saturday to do the show Sunday and drive it home. Yep. That's a really bright yellow. Mm. Yeah, yellow glow. It's funny, I was talking to someone at the event and it was a bit like, you see one of these cars drive down the street and it just stops you in your tracks. They do get the attention. But then when you sure. get there, and there's so many of them, it just overpowers your brain. It's really mm. hard to get a hold on, on what's going on. It was a bit of a surreal experience watching the, I mean, I, I, I drew the layout, I designed the layout, but that, that was just a one dimensional CAD drawing. And then to see them actually arrive, yeah. It's quite amazing. It's just, it's a, something you don't see every day, that's for sure. So the um, the camera's just struggling with the focus a bit. We're, we're still learning all this, Dave, as, as we go to um, continue to bring the footage. And when you go outside, the camera behaves a lot different to say what we're doing at MotorX. Right. But it's, normally I would spend a bit more time on each car, but I knew I had 400 cars <laughs> yeah. to try and get the footage of. And this one here had the air cleaner stuck underneath. I think it might have just had the engine bay redone because it was done really, really well. Yeah. And this group of guys here, they were backwards and forwards between the unrestored one and the restored one. Mm. And I'm sure there's a huge amount of people there. Look at these guys, they're pointing and, 
Yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of blokes there that are either doing a restoration and they're looking for that's right, some that's guidance, right. you know. Which is a really interesting point, you know. That means there's more out there that are on their way back. Yep, for sure. Yep. That's a beautiful car. Hey, we had a, um, a Monza Green 351 Fairmont that that's I GT'd oh, in the 80s. Yep. And sold it for a song, of course. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. yeah, it was a, a quite an unusual car to actually have a Fairmont. It was a Fairmont GS351 well, there you go. with a saddle trim. It was a GT without stripes, basically. That's right. Better insurance. Looks like a bit like that colour, actually. Yeah. So what is there? Three or four greens, is there, in the XY? Yeah, there's Monza, and there's Jewel, and then there's the lighter, the lighter metallic greens. Wild Violet, that's a classic colour. Yeah. So, I don't know whether you would know what sort of percentage were in the, the black fluoro stripe versus the black, because you mainly see all the, the mm. repos all seem to go with the fluoro. Now here's a, an original original. Yeah, that thing is um, Falcon GT Owners Club, New South Wales car. When he pulled in, I sort of thanked him for not doing a single thing to his car. <laughs> so yeah, it. Yeah, you've done well. Yeah, he's just kept it how it is, he drives it. Yep. He's, he's come out on a few runs with us and it's always a spectacle. It gets, uh, oh, that's nice. Paperwork like that is just yeah. exciting to see. Yeah, actually we've, we've been doing a bit of a clean up lately and I just gave Darren a, um, a plastic steel wheel folder that come out of a glove box and it had oh, all, all really? of the, yeah, it had all of the radio um, information yep. in it and <laughs> brand new. And I mean, he's into all that sort of stuff more than me. So now we're into the... Um, These are the rhinos. Yeah. These are a cool thing. So they're all the South African. So yep. they've got a few little tweaks that were done for South Africa. Yeah, they were sent over, partially disassembled and reassembled over there. And they're, they're known as a Fairmont GT because they didn't want them to be called a Falcon. It didn't sound special enough. Right. So and they're Fairmont GTs and their trim is actually the same as a Futura over here. Oh, okay. So yeah. they're, they're quite unique and they're rare. Because I remember they were coming in and then being converted to back, to, back yeah, yeah. to ours. So now, so this is now before the start. So this is about eight o'clock in the morning yeah. and guys are just setting up. And I thought I've got to get started yeah. um, because I'm not going to get through them all. So here's one of those original oh, engine bays. This thing's a cracker, yeah. So a lot of people look at that and go, oh, it's pretty doesn't clean it up. That is cleaned up mm. and, and we're all happy to still see it mm. um, as it was original. Yeah, it's good to see. So this was at eight o'clock. It's, it's really good to see that many cars were already parked. So they were pretty much all in. Um, I think it was about 8.30. Yeah. I mean, and then I just thought, right, I'm going to start somewhere. And I ran along all of the, the phases. So they had the phase three, two is yeah. and the original ho. And was then ho row. Yes, yeah, the ho row. Yeah. Yeah, in blocks of three at the end of every row. Right, that was a good good thinking. Yeah, yeah, it made for a bit of a spectacle. That's and these it. guys were going hard getting this thing cleaned up. Yeah, this is a pretty cool car. Factory delivered in a different colour, then it's had a colour change through the dealership. That's unusual. Actually, is that the one? Yeah, it could be the one. It's surprising how much happened like because i worked in a dealership in that era um especially the ab all those continental vinyl roofs and all that mm. sort of stuff mm. we used to have a guy come up from south australia so i was in broken hill and they'd turn up with a van full of stuff and the cars that hadn't sold mm. the manager there would go yeah whack a roof on that <laughs> put some stripes yeah. on that yeah that's how it happened and, and people go oh you know it's a factory option but it's a dealer fitted option yeah no it was all it was all done like it's done today to, to kit them up to get rid of them because they hadn't sold either the color didn't that's right that's work right. or whatever and if that happens with us when you're getting judged i recall at the last nationals we had a XA. this look cool with the yeah the jelly beans on it see this car hasn't been seen for many years he's a new member to our club he contacted us saying oh, i might come to the nationals i got many phone calls like that and they usually ended with a car that wasn't really suitable for the Nationals. And yep. I said, what have you got? Oh, an XY. What colour is it? Boom. Hero colour. Vermilion Fire. Um, it just, I thought it looked cool with the old style wheels on it. Yeah, yeah. So he went in contemporary. He's got the old keypad um, immobiliser in there as well. <laughs> and he turns around and says, uh, oh, it's a phase three. <laughs> oh, by the way, it's a phase me. three. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, that's the one I was talking about that had the... That's the dealer yeah, change? Yeah. So it was a bit the same. I mean, if that came in when I worked at the dealer, and mm. someone said, I'll take that, but I want it, the colour changed, mm. you'd get a price and change it. I mean, yeah, it, that's right. they were just cars they, at the end of the day. anything to sell a car. Yep. And if any dealer stuff is on the car, a new car, um, prove it with an invoice, a sales invoice, mm -hmm. you, you would actually lose points for it. At yes. The nationals. Yeah. So we've had a few situations where people turned up with cars that have got dealer stuff all over them. And um, yeah, that last nationals, I, I recall saying to the guy, it's a shame you don't have documentation the documentation for it. And he said, oh, hang on a minute. He pulled the invoice out. Oh, of his, wow. So we saw how much the petrol cap cost yep. with, with the lock in it. Yeah, how, how cool much, is that? The mud flaps were on there. Everything was on there. Ho Ho, that belongs to Marlene Zupinoff from Western Australia. It's the most driven ho out there. She dailies this thing. Really? Yeah, yeah. Why not? That's it. <laughs> I've had it for a long time. It's the family car. So, I've just talk about this a little bit here. So all yeah. of these cars have, have obviously got garages. So these are sponsors. Right, eh? Yes. Sponsors were allowed to display and store vehicles in their garages. So that's on that side and we'll get yep. back to all those. So yep. I've got good footage of them, a, a lot of those and I actually talked to one of the owners about his particular car. Mm. So now we're into phase ones. Twos, I think. Twos, yep. sorry. So the two were the Clevos? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, twos were Clevelands. Twos are, twos are the angry GTs. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny you say that because the local trimmer in Broken Hill, um, Rod Lingard had one and mm. it was pretty much new and Rod did some work for me and I was in spares and he got defected for noise and he yeah. took it back and, and the cops wouldn't have anything to do with it. So he actually bought a brand new exhaust, muff, bought brand new mufflers yep. when I was in spares, put them on the car and took it back with the receipt for the new mufflers because it still wouldn't pass, oh, wow. but they had to pass it. Yeah. And he had that car for a long, long time. So that was a white one. Yeah, diamond white, probably. Yeah, I like the two. Did you ever know um, the Henderson Wilsons from Broken Hill? They had a lot of GTs. No. It'd go back a few years now. He was a panel beater up there. He had some really nice cars as well, GTs. Did a lot of restoration work in the 90s. Oh, I see, yeah. On XYs and stuff. Very knowledgeable man on these cars. I was always the guy cutting them up. <laughs> Not GTs, but well, Jeez. one GT, but yeah, I was always the guy that was modifying. Hello, battery explosion. Yeah, that's the typical battery explosion of yeah. things, isn't it? That's a nice engine, mate. I'd say that's so I think I'll go in on the Stillwell Ford because I was thinking that was South Australia, but obviously they, they moved into New South Wales as well. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting. Bobby put those stickers on all these cars. Yep. Of course, he did the, um, was it him? Or, or the, uh, might have been one team in, in South Australia that did the, the Cobra sedans. I think that oh, might have been Stillwell, actually. Yeah, I know the cars. Did a lot of that sort of stuff. Yep. It's a nicely restored one. Yeah, and I always talk about cars looking sharp. Mm. And that one and the earlier Burgundy one, in my eye, just everything looks right. You know, it's mm. all nice and shiny and got that nice edge about it. Yeah, that's a classic combination too. You can't get it past red and black. Can you? I love these electric blue ones. It's such a good look. It's a nice color, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, that's impeccable. So they're all pretty well documented now how they should be, I imagine. Yeah, we've got a database that's got all the information for all the vehicles and that's growing as we do more and more nationals, but it's pretty easy to figure out what you need to return your car back to original. You can get a tax report for your vehicle. That gives you everything you need to know. Ford's not doing the letters at the moment. We're not no, I see that the other day that they're doing a computer change or something, which mm. is, a, a, I hope they continue to do it because oh. it's a valuable resource. I yeah, mean, I, I was fortunate is. to get one on my van before and it just lets you know exactly what you've got. Mm. You know, whether you stay with that or not. Yeah, that's right. Material, I mean, but we'll always be able to get the GT ones, but anything else, if Ford stops doing it, I don't know what, yeah. what, what people have to do. 
So what was the go with the mirrors? So that it was the XW that had this mirror or was that a different option? No, the XW's had that mirror which is similar to the Torino yep. mirror. And then the Y's went to the little race, the aluminium race teardrop. style yeah. teardrop mirror. Which aren't really the best mirrors, but... No, you can't more. see much. No. <laughs> <laughs> they're tidy. It's almost immaterial, isn't it? I've, yeah. I, like I said, we had one and, and I put those mirrors on it. Yeah, it was pretty useless. Mm. Now we're moving it away now into the XA's. Yeah. We, there are some more XW's and, and Y's to come, guys. So don't, mm. let, don't think we've, we've missed them all. That was a beautiful car, that dark green one. Yeah, that's lovely. That's a lime glaze. Now my, well not, this is not quite my perfect car, but I always said a, a red pepper four-door black trim. Oh yeah. But it was interesting walking around. As I get older, I think I'm changing because I'm, I'm, I'm sort of hanging more with the XC's now, back to my roots where I started. Yeah. That's a wild violet. There was a lot of coupes. Hard yeah, tops, I get yeah. in trouble for coop, but oh, um, mate, coop, hard top, whatever. I, I, they are hard tops, but I mean, my number plate says coop, coop. on mine, so. Of course. <laughs> so, this particular car, obviously very well presented. So, mm. do you know this car at all? Can't recall who the owner is of this car, but. There was the one like this restored in Broken Hill, I was wondering whether it was it. It's been, it's changed hands a couple of times. Um, Terry Turley restored a, an RPO in that color. Oh, okay. Um, did a really good, um, almost a subtle restoration. I've seen mm. it a few years later when it was up at um, Sydney for sale. That's Doc Baldwin's car. He's the guy that did the aerial photography or the drone. Oh, right, eh? Yeah, no, thank, thanks very much for that, Doc, because we've been able to use a bit of that. He was more than happy to pass some of that on to me to get the drone footage. Yeah, he's excellent at that stuff. So a couple of these had some... Um, Decent sized tyres under them. Definitely. The coupes love the big tyres. Don't they? Yeah. It's interesting that um, I had a look at Moffat's car over in the museum. Yep, yep. And the guards on that are actually quite well pumped, front yeah. and rear. That's so right. They had a lot of tyre under them at the, when they were running them at Bathurst. So look at those little wheels on the back of that now. Yeah. That's the Surfer Orange car. I was yeah, just going to say that. painted this colour. The only one? Yep. He generally carries the number plate one of, but um, he did well. He ended up winning um, entrance choice. Nice. Actually, yeah. I did see that on Facebook, I think. Yeah. The old coupe's got an unbelievable following at the moment. Mm. And I mean, I've done a few and, and we sell a lot of parts to help people to restore them and um, yeah, just keep finding them. Yeah. There's so many that have um, obviously been hidden away. Yeah, and the rising value of these vehicles has made it viable for people to, to restore them. Exactly now. right. Makes it hard to collect them, but... It was interesting that when I... The guys with this car, that was the, the current owner and the previous owner, and apparently yeah. he, he bought it off someone else. And yep. it, it, it's, it's funny how everyone knows the cars and who, who, the, who did the restoration and who had it and who was the next owner. Well, there's a photo in the boot of what the car used to look like. It was actually painted red pepper many years ago. Isn't it amazing how many GTs were painted red? That, that is amazing. And for me, being a red pepper coupe owner, <laughs> it's, um, it's quite good to see all of these cars going back to their going original back. color. But I mean, whether it was a coupe or an XY or whatever, mm. there just seemed to be so many GTs that mm. at some point got converted back to um, well, painted red and now, like you say, they're all going back. This is an RPO. This is a brand new restoration. That's Camille Issa's car. Stunning job. So at the end of the rows, we had the RPOs. Oh, okay. Yeah. So there were... So that's the one I was saying. My mate Fuzz has got a, a XA four-door yellow, yep. like that, that come out of South Australia. and. I remember when he bought it a long, long time ago and he paid 12 grand for it and I laughed at him and said, you're a bloody nutter, mate. Yeah, and now it's worth, much. yeah. <laughs> Who knows what it's worth now. He's hiding his toy. Yeah, yeah. I think they were doing photos or something and it's, it's interesting. Look. Shaker. Yeah, it's a bit of a shame. Not quite my thing, but... They look a bit... Um, they look interesting. On an XA because it's already got the two knacker scoops on either yeah. side of it. I just think they belong on one car. I don't yeah. like them on the late models. 
Now this one looks like it's just been dragged out of somewhere as well. Yeah, that's interesting. So it's got the, the wine back sunroof, but the outside wine back. It had the Fairmont stainless across the sill as well. Yeah, is... it's an unusual looking car. Yeah. I, I kind of like seeing the personal touches that people put on their cars. I mean, when I was in spares, we sold them unbelievable amount of side vents and bonnet scoops oh, and yeah. you know when they were new and they came out mm. people were just in buying all of those accessories and putting them on all, all, all sorts of cars yeah now here's one of those vinyl roofs i was talking yeah, about that's a dealer roof yeah so that would have been you know just done as a a way to move the car on and the side strips are the same because they're look like they're stick-ons yeah they're stick-ons for sure if that was a protection back car it would have overriders on it yep that as well like this lime glaze seems to be correct and the and the stripes are further up the guard as well yep. that's what i sort of picked up on it yeah and this is what i find interesting when i talk to guys like yourself and darren's a bit the same mm. all these little things mm. are what catch your eye and go oh that's not quite right or this should be there yeah but that to me is what the gt owners clubs are all about it's about knowing Definitely. Knowing the product and knowing what it is, it's not just a normal car club, mm. but a car club that is specific and, and really love what they do. I mean, when you're judging a category, especially if it's, you know, that, that's your specialty, so when a car rolls into scrutineering, you find yourself looking at one and within 10 seconds you've noted all of the incorrect things that yep. you can see and the highlights of the correct part straight away. And I mean, it's not a lot different to what we do in the judging side of things because mm. I often say to people it's the same, so that's a nice looking car. Yeah, this is the one that was unveiled at um, Summer Notes. Oh, okay, yep. yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting build. Yeah, there's a, there's a few things on it that um, I looked at and went, oh, you know, mm. it, it, from a restoration point of view <coughs> where things should be CAD plated and they're painted or that type of stuff. Super nice, nice car. But when I looked at it, the summer nets, I thought this wouldn't do very well at, at say, the Nationals because there's so many little things that weren't 100% correct. And I mean, everyone's got a choice to do whatever they want. I love these wheels on these things. Yeah, they're mini lights. Yeah, the old mini light on a coupe or any of the, that sort of era Falcon. Martin Goff's GT. So Chrome Five Slot. Yeah, he's owned this thing for 38 years. Really? Yep. Vice President of our club. That's a very unusual front spoiler on that. Hmm. Rarely seen. I think I've seen another one. So people often say to me there weren't many coupes at the show how when I go to some of the other shows, so they'll be more than happy this time. Hmm. Yeah, it was it's pretty well loaded. Center lines look pretty good too. Center lines always suit hard tops. So that's a different, yeah, honestly, I was gonna say it's a different yellow, but I think it's just the angle we're coming in from. Yeah, it's a yellow blaze car. Polar white. So the, the side vents were an XB thing, weren't they? They mm. started in XB? Yep. Yeah, Stig made it an appearance. Which is... <laughs> the globes look good. These are coming up, they're a really interesting mini light. They're a two-piece. Yeah, I've seen those and I was wondering, and I didn't see the owner there, and um, Bosco that does our tyres here at Bridgestone had a set like that that he's gonna put on his red one and never did, and I was wondering yep. whether they were them, because they Probably. were a three-piece. Oh, it's a three-piece, is it? I'm very, pretty sure they're a three-piece, yeah. Very few of those were made. So if they're the ones, I think they came from England. Uh, so he brought them in special for his and then sold the vehicle and he's doing a um, like an XE um, with the big flare kits and stuff on it. Oh, uh, yeah. Now there's a nice car. Interesting car. It's uh, factory Brambles Red. 
that car. Which, which is what, an XY colour? Yeah, really odd for an XB. Had a factory paint coat on it. It was funny back then, I'm, I mean, I worked for a very short period in sales in mm. the dealership, that what you could ask for and get done. Yeah, yeah. Because um, most of the cars were ordered. You mm. know, the, the, the dealer would do a few for stock, but primarily people would come in and you'd go through and tick off the list. And we used to have this little fold-out card, which I'm sure you've seen. Yeah, some, yeah. some of the old, you know, people have kept those, where it actually had a list of all the options and how much the options were. Yep. And there was like, you know, 30 options where you could go, do you want this, do you want that, all the way down the list. And here's one of them corporates, so quick as air. Yeah, that's a lovely car. Lawrence Adard's car. Was it, it's funny when you're walking around, you're listening to people and the guy's going, I wonder what the silver is, because it's a very unusual silver. It's mm. not like a Ford silver. This is what I call a ticker box car. So it's protection pack, sunroof. You probably go around, oh, it's got the cloth trim as it's well. A very highly optioned car, that. It's a bit like, I'll have one of those with everything. With packs. everything. <laughs> and here's another one, sunroof, vinyl roof, protection pack, yep. air con. That's Peter Cronus's car, pretty well known car. And to be honest with you, I was pretty happy to not see the place get taken over by rowdy, buddy, blown things everywhere. Mm. I mean, there's horses for courses, and to me, this is the Nationals. Yeah, it rarely happens these days. A deep aqua, I mean, a Skyview Blue XB, that's rarely seen. Yeah, I was just going to say, I don't know that I, if someone mentioned that colour, I wouldn't <coughs> know that colour. Mm, it's an XA colour, predominantly. Look how high that bonnet's sitting up, mm. on the angle. Yeah. It might be the camera. And the same as this next one with the, the brown paint outs on it. Yeah, they, I'm not sure if that's an antique or a sandstone beige, but it's got the walnut glow blackouts on it. I must have been taken by this car, I've stopped and Oh, the judges were there, mm. I must have just been trying to get a bit of... Yeah, look at that grill and all painted. Yeah, all the walnut glow. Yeah. There's only like a few colours that have their blackouts in a complementary colour. So the green ones have the dark green blackouts. The beiges and the browns have the walnut glow. Mm. Even around the windows and all, it's very unusual. Yeah, yeah. So it was a good day to get your Ford jacket out. Oh, your thick one, that's for sure. How cold <laughs> was it? Unbelievable. Yeah, it was incredible. I mean, it was not just Bathurst, it was the whole state. Yeah. I mean, the two days before, it was cold, but they really turned out. Saturday, it was, yeah, it was quite bleak. Mm. I, I had um, a t-shirt, a shirt. <laughs> I had my Ford Motorsport um, yeah. Puffer jacket and then another one over the top of that. Did you? Yeah, it was, oh yeah, it was really. Layers. Yeah, here was another good, really original in the yeah. way. Yeah, this and, um, uh, guy, he entered not for judging initially and when we saw the car, we, we sort of talked him into bringing it through for judging. Which happens occasionally. People turn up, their first nationals. Yep. They don't know the system or understand system, the yeah. process. Falcon GT Owners Club in New South Wales car. So then this is right up the far end. So this is like the associates? Yeah, this is the associates end and um, the replicas. So uh, all of the GT replicas were together. Mm -hmm. there, was, there was a few, quite a few, more than what. I was gonna say, it's good to get. see that you've done that. A lot of people mightn't realize they can take their car there because mm. it was always sort of shunned a bit, but I yep. think it's good that there's, there is an opportunity for the for them to come along and bring their car? Yeah, I mean, I don't know how popular I'm going to be for putting all the <laughs> replicas together up the end, but it worked out well. I mean, this one here is the Blaze Blue replica. There's only ever been one Blaze Blue right. GT produced. Yeah. And it's here. We've got it in one of the pit garages, actually. Mm -hmm. You probably. Yeah, we'll have some footage of that it. for sure. It's 
Paul Galvin's replica. I actually did a work on, on one for someone just as a tidy up. They bought it as a good replica and paid mm. good money for it. And then we just spent, Darren and I, I don't know, two or three weeks and trying to make it the best we could with yeah. what we knew that, you know, the wiring and, yeah. you know, it had the wrong coil and it had this and, you know, just odds mm. and ends that weren't right. And it made a massive difference, you know. For sure. This is George Pappas's car. It's built to an incredibly high standard. Beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it, um, it's, from what they've figured out, it's the car that was on one of the brochures. Okay. And, and one of the advertising campaigns real briefly. Yep. And he's turned it into the, the 54D replica. Charlie's Landau, this car is pretty nice. I, I did the close up there because it reminded me, my because we had the deal, I was involved with the dealership with my parents. Mm. The mum used to drive one. Oh right, yeah. Um, probably more so a four door, but the hubcaps used to come go missing all the time on the rent, like with the grids and stuff oh, out right. our way. And they're heavy. Yeah, they, they are. And they're I balanced. actually had one of those hanging hanging up in my room. Yeah, yeah. At boarding school. Oh wow. And someone picked it up one day in my biography. Yeah. So, I mean, I've been involved and around these things all my life. If you're towing for work or play, make sure your vehicle is up to the task. Your gross vehicle mass can be upgraded to keep everything legal and above board. Find your nearest stockist at lovellsauto.com.au and talk to the professionals about getting your vehicle right for the job. So don't forget if you're, if you're looking for springs for your, your Falcon, your GT or whatever, Lovells do a full range of springs for all of those early cars as well. And um, of course we thank Lovells for their support to help us to continue to bring you all this footage and for me to get about and do all the shows. Mate, panel vans, big comeback. Big comeback. So as you know, I'm into one at the moment myself. Yeah. And I was talking to Owen Webb the other day down at Motor X, he's doing an XW panel van. Oh really? For himself, yeah. Wow. So he was sort of hitting me up, what national, you know, when are we going to the van nationals type of deal? Yeah. So it's, everyone's getting into it. Yeah, that's a pretty good van. I went to my first one in 1977. Oh wow, okay. My first, the Muldura, and it's back there for the, however many years it is, mm. be the 50th, I imagine. They're going back to Muldura. That's good. Some nice GS's there. Glad they all ended up together. This is a cool car with the surfer roof. Rear spoiler. The rear wing, they're talking about Owen Webb, of course he had the black one, the bruiser with the wing on the back. Yeah, I recall that car. Yeah. So I think that was at the 86 Nationals. Yep. Nice K curve there. So we hear K code quite a lot, it's a bit like all the Mustang terminology, and of course the K is for 351. Yeah, that's it. So then all the late models. The GTFs. It was a good turnout. A good it was a good showing, and I mean, um, the prices on these things are, sort of went through the roof last year, mm. and they've probably stabilised a little bit now. But they're really holding good value, aren't they? They sure are. And it's good to see that guys are actually giving their new GTs the same, or if not more, attention than what to actually maintain them to, and look after them. And yeah, it's. It's interesting. Oh, Dave's GT. It's not mine, but <laughs> like we didn't know back in the day what was going to come of the GTs and exactly right. And I mean, you know, when they came out, it was like, oh yeah, yeah. And I mean, I had the opportunity to buy one when they came out in the EL. Yep, yeah, yeah. And I often say the guy that paints painted my cars back then, Gary Dart, he worked at the. Um, ended up at the dealership working, but at the time he ended up buying one and I'm pretty sure he'd still have it. Mm. And I, I squibbed out and decided not, they couldn't tell me whether it was going to be limited edition or not. Oh, right, yeah. And they couldn't tell me what the options were and they were about 60K mm. back then Which when they came out. Which was quite a bit back then for a car. And um, yeah, so I didn't go ahead with it and it took me right up until only five years ago to get my next GT, which is, mm. we, we, we actually have, Heather drives a 335. Just like that one. They're quick. That's our darling. Yeah, I mean, you can't use it. Mm. 
the amount that they've got. They're a beautiful car to drive, so we've put quite a few Ks on ours now and we, we plan on to put some more on it. So we use it every day. I looked at um, maybe selling it and buying something to replace it and I really couldn't find anything to replace it. You may as well use it, mate. Like. Yeah, exactly. I actually quite like the white one when I've seen it. I hadn't yeah. seen one before and I, I actually quite liked it. In, in real life, it was um, it's, it really stood out. All the black accents really pop on the white one. It's unusual that the panda eyes aren't done on that. Yeah. Not sure why that's the case for that one. So lots of colours. A lot of these colours are paying homage to the old colours too, which is nice. That's an interesting blue. So originally I wanted a blue one. But I couldn't find a blue one, so I'd settled on the red one and ended up with a red ute. So we've got two red cars. That's, you've got the pair. Everyone goes, oh, you must love red. And I said, no, it was really about what was available at the time. Mm. Now, of course, we're going back now, going backwards. So we're working our way back towards the XYs. So the these PF coppers numbers. really have held incredibly well, the dollars, mm. haven't they? Yeah. Well, what I see of them, anyhow, it's always funny you think that's what they've got on it. But what they return, I'm not sure, but um, you never see a cheap one. No, they are quite rare, and so are these 40th anniversary cars. I remember when I first moved to Wollongong, they were new then, and there was one at the dealer. Mm. My daughter was working there at the time in the office, and I um, went in and had a lot. It was a beautiful looking car. Yeah, I don't mind the BF, it's a tough car. That's a classic combination, the silver with silver, the orange. Yeah, yeah it is. It's pretty much the, the dream combo for an XW GT to have a silver fox with the orange stripes. That's Brian Margate there, cleaning pumpkin. <laughs> the pumpkin? Yeah, very well known car. <laughs> yeah, give him a shout out. Yeah. There's his wife, Nettie. So that's similar to my ute, but I, I went the black stripe instead of the white, because mine was turned, when I bought it, mine had no stripes on it. Oh, right. It was a, a promo car for a McDonald's store. So I don't know whether it was a delete stripe or whether they just that's put the stripes off it. Yeah. Yeah, the, the original rego on the, the books for it is McFast. No, really? Yeah, yeah. Huh. And, and the guy obviously had a, 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 a Macca's franchise yeah. And he, he bought it through the business and when I first polished it, you could still see the big M on the door. <laughs> That's hilarious. So I think I was the fourth owner. Yeah. Or I am the fourth owner. McFast. McFast. <laughs> so of course, Darren's had a few of these. Yeah. BAs, BFs. He's got that really interesting one at the moment, the blue. Yeah, the prototype. Yeah. So yeah. for those that haven't seen that, Darren, that, that helps me here, he's um, got an FG that was the, the prototype for the GDP that was built by Ford mm. before they were then made by, would that mean Tickford back then? Yeah. And it's um, got a whole lot of different bits on it, a few BF bits and a few of the FGs. So here's them early ones. Mm, these are the PLs. And it's in that um, red blue colour. It's the only one in that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think. Most of his cars are blaze blue, I presume. It's, is it blaze? Yeah, I think it is. So that'll actually be in, in one of the up and coming collector magazines. I'm trying to think which one he said they actually grabbed it because he drove it up there. Mm, Australian Muscle Car Magazine. They're going to do a story on it. So 97. Yeah, so, that, so that would have been when I was um, doing the Pioneer Coop, when I was looking at buying one of those. They're interesting, these cars, when they came, uh, everyone said they were ugly, and now they've come into their own. I think they had some fairly unique items, like the grill and the... Yeah, that front grill piece. The grill and the, the, the bit on the bonnet, I never quite got my head around, the rest of it didn't mind. I always liked the when they brought the Sprint out. Mm. Um, and I actually had a, a brand new 
AU3 with the Rebel kit. Oh, yep, yep. And Naruma Blue. Nice. Um, and I put some Momo wheels and I had the Momo upgrade and the wheel upgrade and the mm. stereo upgrade. And it's one of those cars, you know, that you wish you never sold because they're now a bit of a collector. It's good to see with the kids, yeah. helping Dad. And I noticed a lot when I was wandering around three generations. Yep, you know, yep. we've so, got uh, quite a few members like that. And yep. It's really a really family orientated scene. I found with the channel now, I get a lot of um, people that I, that I speak to where the father and son, you know, normally the son is 12 to 16, mm. are actually watching the program together, which That's gives, good. gives me a, a good feeling. Now, obviously you had some, some iconic cars there as well, like this one. Yeah, so Parry from Muscle Car Warehouse, he let us use the 888 car to raise money for Bear Cottage, which was a really, you know, great thing for him to do. It's a very worthy cause. A car like this is something that you don't generally see. Yeah, you know, outside. it's an What about one like this? Oh, I see this one a little bit. That's my Helen. So this is Dave's car, so it's, and it's just had a, a, a fresh coat. Yeah, yeah, she had a little a closed door respray just to tidy her up before the event. Now you was telling me that's in acrylic too, is it? Yeah. Yep. And yeah. It, and it was funny because I didn't realise it was yours when I first got there and I looked at it and I thought that looks like a really sharp, clean, original car. Yeah. And then you told me you'd resprayed it so obviously you got that right. Yep. And here's another one of these. Um, yeah, this so is another a couple one of, of these. Parry's supercars. He likes his supercars. He's got this one and he's got the AU. Yeah, I think that there's another one that was in the, the garage behind this one that I reckon I'd have some footage of, being mm. a bit of a Ford man myself. Yeah, so Muscle Car Warehouse was our diamond sponsor for the event, and they went above and beyond. They did, didn't they? That was a massive display. Massive. I mean, to bring these things out, and he did things like, see those three lime glaze in the background? They all belong to one guy, they, that's um, Milton Skinner's cars, so he grouped together a lot of cars and enabled people as he was a sponsor to not only store their cars in the garage, have them displayed and judged yeah. in the garage and the only way to have that opportunity was to sponsor. So he ended up with eight pit garages overall. Yeah, it's a big I spread. mean there's an incredible amount of um, high-end cars in there and we're going to go through some of these now. Mm. As the, the day went on, I, I struggled a bit. Um, the guys from the GT Restorations, there was like almost too many cars in together, but yeah, I the, did the, the best I could. The judges struggled as well. Yeah. But the, he's a bit of a lime glaze freak, Milton. He's got other cars. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. They're all lime glaze. It's definitely a standout color. Mm, definitely. It's also one of the super bird colours from back in the day. But that's, uh, yeah, RPO hardtop, RPO sedan, and a GT sedan. I nearly said only a GT you sedan. See the, the trim in that one? That's the Spectrum, the people call it uh, Hawaiian. Yep. Yeah, it's the Spectrum insert, very interesting. That's Bill's XA. So similar in the trim, so I've obviously gone in for a look at that. Yeah, he loves doing that with his cars. He's got a few. He's recently he'd done an XB and he put an interest. I might have to think about there. something like that for the van, mate. I think the van would uh, let, it, let it go with that. Would suit the van. Now for look sure. at the look at the, the finish on this thing. Yeah, this is Parry's phase three, I think. Yeah, 347. Yep, that's his car. Incredible car. Older restoration. I'm sure I'll get back incredible. to that in a minute. And he's. And is that a Polo? Cosmic. Polo blue? Cosmic? Oh, yeah, Cosmic Blue XA. So the guy I was talking about in Broken Hill, he had a Cosmic Blue XA four-door. Mm, it's a lovely colour. Both of these cars previously belonged to the same person. And you can pick them, can't you? They just look right. Mm. You know, you, you, you run past with the camera and go, yeah, that's a nice car. That's the bold blue phase three. Yep. The only one. This is also known as the unicorn. This car. It's quite um, well optioned. Stunning colour. We had this car drawn on the day as well by the artist that, that Nash Art that did all the artwork, mm -hmm. and we auctioned off the um, 
picture and of course the owner, Mr. Halen, he ended up He owning ended up it. owning it? Yeah. 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 They're a lovely car to drive. A lot of people think they're not, but if you have a nice tight XY, I often it's say to people nice. that even like with the XCs, people go, oh, I want to do this, I want to do that. And I say, look, I had a brand new one and they drive fine. You yeah. don't need to change suspension components. If mm. it's all new, mm. they drive really well. They do. And yeah, what about these stands? How cool were they? Yeah, he won best display for this. Yeah. So there was a couple done like this and then you would imagine that most of these boxes were the parts that used on the car, but... Mm. Um, Very cool. The amount of effort to to come up with the stand first to come up with the design and then fabricate and then get the car up in the air and mm. and even the the outer frame the, yeah, the that, rails is, it's got the radio resistance wire and the coil the coil tops. boxes and yeah it's so cool yeah he 3d printed all of those i was pretty blown away when i saw it so that's one of the awards we give is best display but you've also got to consider everyone gets outside you get seven by four meters right. to display your car so he was luckily to be in a sponsor's display area and they've given him plenty of room to set his display up. It's well over the 7x4 by the looks of it. That's very cool. I know a lot of us were looking at those boxes. <laughs> Thinking, yeah, how cool is that? Yeah. And someone asked me the other day about the colours and all in the brakes and, and of course that was just mm. the way they were out of the box new. Yeah, that's right. And a lot of that would have been about, a lot of the, the colours was about making it easy for the production line yep. to put things together. That's lovely under there. Bit yeah, of overspray. So, so all the overspray and things and, yeah. and people often, you know, I hear people saying, how would they know? Well. Those cars we were talking about that haven't been restored, when you mm. when you give them a clean and pressure clean them back, that stuff all starts to show. Yeah, that's right. I, I had a uh, my painter do a car for me and he said it was the hardest thing he's ever done because he mm. couldn't do it to the standard that he's used to. Yep. But that's just how it is. We're trying to preserve and maintain the true history of the car. So this particular car now debuted at MotorX mm. and um, I have a chat to him in a minute. And he'll tell us a bit about the car and the process you've got to go through to end up owning something like this. Oh, that's interesting. Yellow ochre car. Oh, that's a lovely car. So we're just here at the National. So this beautiful GT here I've seen at Motor X and you would have seen on a previous video. So how are you going buddy? This is the owner. Good, thank you. So just how tell you us held? who you are and a bit about yourself. Uh, my name is Chris. Um, I'm from down in Melbourne. Uh, and I've just had, had a love for these cars. First car was an XYGS and just had a love for the cars and always wanted to own an XYGT. And now you do? Now I do. So mate, you're just telling me five years? Five years. I bought the car in 2016 um, at, at the Shannon's auction. Oh, okay. Yep. And it was it, it was expensive then, and then I <laughs> decided to restore it. So, um, just by the signs and all, and what I seen at Motorex, so Grand Tourer uh, obviously involved in, in the process. Just yep. tell me a bit about the way you went about it. Uh, so I had the car for a year or two, and then decided to restore it. So I approached Grand Tourer, um, and yeah, they said bring the car down, we'll have a look at it, and. Um, yeah, it went from there. They organised... Um, so they basically pulled the car apart? They stripped the car completely. Yep. And then it went out to paint and panel? It went out to paint and panel. So it went out to panel first. Yep. Um, and uh, that, yeah, he did the pan panel. And then that took a little while. And then after that, I took it out of there and it went to a painter. Cool. So then once it was painted, back to Grand Tourer for assembly? Once it was painted, come back to Grand Tourer for assembly. And then that crazy rush for Motorex, I imagine? That crazy rush for... <laughs> correct. So, 
Uh, obviously, having been involved a lot myself, I imagine you lost five years of your life with this build. F five years of my life, yes. Sleepless nights. Yeah, and I mean, even if you're not effectively hands-on, you're still organising stuff, chasing parts, trying oh. to bring it all together. Oh yeah, it is. Yeah, looking for you know the the seals were the seals had a little bit of rust, so we had to get seals for it. Um, just chasing bits and pieces. Um, majority of the stuff was genuine on there, so we could restore those parts. But there were a couple of bits that weren't genuine on the car from a uh, just a wear and tear, I guess, over the years. Right, hey, so the roller door's up now, so we get back to where we were. <laughs> so, so yeah, so granted to do all that, but obviously chasing parts is, is really a major deal with these. Sort it of is a major stuff. deal, and every 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 part has a code on it. Every part has a number on it, um, whether it's manual or auto. The distributor's different. The carburetor's different. It's crazy, isn't it? I mean, I when I did that um, Cobra 400. You know, there's things even in the XC where the, the door lock strikers have got date stamped. Everything's stamped. Yes. And to do it properly, it's just a huge amount of work. Well, yeah. Mate, I'm, I'm really impressed. It's a beautiful car. It's a beautiful colour. And, Thank you. Um, I, I guess you're going to have it for life now. Yep, it will. Hopefully for generations to come. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. So there you go, David. It just does mm. to absorb your whole life, doesn't it? It does. And it's a... It's a mean feat to enter in the restored category. It really is. And that gut car did pretty well? It did, yeah. Awesome. So mate, we're just gonna keep going through these sheds and I there was a couple of times I was just blown away by the amount and the level mm. of the cars. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. To to try and Now this was a genuine one, was it? Was that a route that the That's is that we're back in Muscle Car Warehouse's garage, so that's the real deal. The Alto Ford car is probably the most, it's the original GT that is a racing car. Mm -hmm. When it came to entering that vehicle, we were looking at it as though you could actually enter that in as a phase two, Yep. but it will suffer because of the stickers and stuff on it, right. lose points for it. Yep. Um, Parry wasn't there to chase trophies, so he just said, you know, whatever. Whatever, yeah. yeah. And of course, I've seen this a couple of times. This is the, the Doctor's Delete Stripe. Pretty cool well, the car, Delete car, I think they call it, don't they? Yeah. So, for those people that aren't fully educated, when you order a GT, you could order it with the, without things. So, a mm. lot of people, in the, this case, apparently a Doctor, would order the car and have it without the stripes. Yeah, so instead of the stripe, it's got the badging on the side, like a XW GT has. Oh, okay, so that's something I didn't know. There you go. So yeah, they've got some few, a few unique little things. And I just, I close up there on the the, the boot the release boot because popper, yeah, yeah it, all those things bring back memories for me because I um, used to sell all that stuff. Mm. Oh, this is a really interesting car. That's the New Highland Green. Only one. I to say I've never seen that colour until yeah. I seen it there the other day. There was one built, and then the car was written off well early, so they built the owner another one. Right. Straight away, yeah. So it's the only one, and um... and then another delete. Is it this one? Yep. Delete stripe. See, so it's got the badge on it. Yep. And this is Lazarus, right? So this is the car that was damaged under transport by a oh, boat. I, did see, I think I'll show you the pictures in a minute that had the roof all caved in on it. Yeah, terrible. So the car... It's mint now. Mint. The, the work done was incredible to fix it. It's all documented. It was all over Facebook as well while they were doing it. And they, they brought it back to life. But yeah, boat here. Oh, that's terrible. Isn't it? Yeah. So every car's got a story to tell. Exactly, and that's, that's something that we say as well, that the cars don't lie about their history. Yep. Owners might lie about their car's history sometimes, <laughs> cars don't lie. They reveal all their truths. That's a beautiful looking at the blue and the red. Yeah, it's stunning. I like the five slot without dress room and hubcap look mm. too, it's just a real racing car.
original spare. So best boot is another award that gets handed out. Yeah, okay. Yeah, best boot, best paint, best engine bay, best interior. So it's like, how'd you go at the next year? I won best boot. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Got best boot. It's a nice engine bay, very original. So I see a few with a historic sticker on them. Is that what's that all about? Is that something just for Reggie? I'm above the number plate. I had just yeah. a sticker that had historic. I actually seen a few of those at the event, and I didn't know exactly what that was all about. Was it on? I wonder if it was New South Wales registered. Cause it might we, be. So another original engine bay there. Mm, lovely. Unrestored XYGDHO Phase Three. Shaker. We don't see enough unrestored cars today. Yeah. Oh, this is CAG. So this is the marathon car, the actual car. Yep. So London to Sydney. Yep. Got Fred Gibson's signature on it there. I love it. I think I'll go for a close-up of the, the stuff on the back parcel shelf. Yeah. The two-way and the speaker box on there. I got home from the presentation dinner at the ridges where I was staying, and this was parked outside the ridges. Oh, really? Just, just parked. Just parked there. And I was like, are you kidding? So, it's good to see it's still getting driven around a bit. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, very cool car. He's also got the bumper bar, I think, and bull bar off one of the other ones. Yeah, it was sitting in front of the car. Yeah. Yeah. He went all out with his area. And with the stand, yeah, I, I was pretty taken by these uh, the tables and that. Yeah. Yeah, as we were preparing for the nationals, he was going through all of that kind of stuff. And I kept saying, mate, you're really going all out here. <laughs> so this is Jason Allen's display. He's a Falcon G Tennis Club in New South Wales member. He's big on unrestored cars. That X8 Coupe is incredible. I mean, it's funny how everyone has their, their flavour. I mean, I'm obviously a bling guy, so I'm yeah. all about the full restored, but I appreciate and mm. understand people maintaining that original car. I mean, when Darren had that, um, the Blaze Blue, the original one, mm. and he brought it, he let me use it for reference to do that Cool Mink Coupe that we did. Oh, right. And um, I had it here for a couple of weeks. I said, I'd love to, love to just clean it, not yeah. restore it, yeah. because it was so original, mm. it, it almost needed a good detail. Now, yeah. what a, this, like this one top car, isn't it, this one? Yeah, this is Leo Curry's Phase 3. Really nice display and, and a stunning car, just... Yeah. Know, no matter where you looked, it's just incredible. It's always been a really good car, and he's continuously improved it. So I think Darren was saying it was originally done without the vinyl roof and then he's put the roof on it. So yeah. it was a factory vinyl roof car. Yeah, and I thought it was quite back. an unusual combo with the cream on the yellow. Mm. I saw it at the last Nationals pull in after it's freshened up and it had the number plate on it, all NOS. <laughs> and we were just laughing about that because we knew that there was a hell of a lot of new old well, stock, stock parts. parts on it, yeah. Mm. Yeah, racing cars can always be contentious. I must admit, I'm a bit taken by the ones I see at the shows, just, you know, takes you back, because I was fortunate mm. enough to do some of the early Bathurst, um, more so the XC yeah. era, BC, um, and a few after that, but I'm a bit of a fan of the old green stuff. Oh yeah. Reproduction stuff, they look pretty cool. Yeah, Wayne Draper's sons still run the hobby. Yeah, this was just tucked away as if someone had sort of turned up and went, oh, I don't need to show it or whatever, and it was, and I thought I'll grab that because it was just a really nice looking car. It's a very original car. Um, you didn't actually enter the Nationals. It... Yeah, that's, it looked a bit like that, and I thought I'm gonna get a photo, get a bit of video of that anyhow, because it yeah. looked pretty cool. Some big trophies in that boot. Mm. So that's one of the 64Es. So it 
was a little bit like you know where to look next mm. when you were there because there was just so many cars to see. Yeah, it's a big lolly shop, isn't it? That's for sure. I didn't even see that car. <laughs> there you the go. Day, yeah. Yeah. Another XR. So that's something I had to do was also shuffle cars from the rows outside back into sponsors displays because people had made arrangements with sponsors to have their cars yes. in certain displays. Yeah, this was really well displayed. Yeah. And, and the boards in the background and all really took me back to when I was working in the dealership. That's very cool. And all of these cars were immaculately presented. Yeah, this and a lot of the memorabilia. Billy Carantonis's area. So this is one guy that owns a lot of cars. Right. And he's brought, I think he brought seven cars to the Nationals, which is impressive. It's impressive feat to get them all there. Oh yeah. And then to display Present them. Present it and display it and have them all, you know, of high quality cars like this. It's really cool. That looks like Bob Sahato's unrestored phase two. And I think that's Glenn's Wild Violet XA. Nice car. Beautiful car. Mm. It's a great colour. You know, and that's one of the colours that when they were painted back in the day, there was a big warranty call from Ford because the clear cape went on all the Wild Violet cars. I remember. And a lot of people also would buy a second-hand wild violet car and go, I don't want a purple car. So, yeah. I'm going to paint it red. I'll paint it red or black. Yeah, yeah. That's right. It was funny back in those acrylic days because I... Well, that's a phase one, actually. Means I hope. When I was in the service department, mm. that people would come buy a car and come in and they'd you know give it a couple of washes and they were picking all the things they wanted fixed. And I used to say to them, you're better off not to fix it because in three years' time you'll see everywhere they've been because... Yeah. Especially in Broken Hill with the amount of sun. True. You know, the UV out there and people go, oh, I want it fixed. And you go, oh, I'm just off leaving it. Alone. You know, it'd be a little mark or something. Paint on that's immaculate, isn't it? Yeah, and it's a stunning colour for an XA to really see. So the sun's finally come out now. It's playing up with the camera a bit, but mm. um, this burgundy coupe come up next so, is um, a barn find. Yeah, this is the RPO that was on the news that had been stashed away in a carport for many years. And he's, well the signs just give it a wash and they're clean and yeah, probably spent many hours trying to get it to. Um, the interior is incredible. It was, though. wasn't it? Yeah, true top and capsule. That's a pretty rare color for an XB. They didn't make, I think they made two lime glaze XBs. It's an XA color. But I think this is sedan yeah, like a well. walking encyclopedia Dave. Oh, it's, I don't mean to be. It's, just sort of... <laughs> it's what you love and that's what you do. I'm a, yeah. bit, I'm a bit like that with the, the show car side of things. But um... Yeah, that's right. It's funny, isn't it? You, you do something your whole life and it comes second nature. It like just a... becomes knowledge, yeah. And I, mm. people say, how do you know all this stuff? Oh. So now here's another. This car's incredible. Big cars in here. This and is Billy's. a lot of them. Yeah, so we're in um, CJ's Falcon GT Restorations garage at the moment. He restored this car for Billy Carantonis. Um, we're also going to have this car at all Ford Day. It almost looks too new, that one. That's incredible. Incredible build. So we'll enter that in the all Ford Day concourse for the restored division. Right. And I will be very surprised if it doesn't do extremely well because it's Incredible, this build. Apollo blue, white trim. Yeah, very nice car. Yeah. So this is the one I was saying, a little bit difficult to get some footage. And um, yeah, just with the amount of cars and the quality, and I was actually talking to, to Dan Bowden on, on his stand there at one stage, and he just said, like, you walked in there and it was like, wow. You know, so many top-end cars, all in the one spot at the one time, was almost impossible to, for your brain to take it in. It was a little bit difficult for the judges in there. Look at that. 
Yeah. Just unbelievable. The amount True of blue phase two. That's a rare car. We had a true blue phase uh, one and a half turn up. A car that nobody's seen for over 30 years. Really? And I had a few people say, oh, if you're going to do a replica, why was you painted that color? It's too obvious. Yep. And when they found out it was actually it's its color, the real... they fell over. Yep. People didn't even know it existed. So I was just struggling to get past people here because they're all trying to get a look and I'm trying to get a look. Yeah, so imagine being a team of judges trying to judge cars and mm. that's something we'll look at for future nationals. Um, allocating the 7x4 metre area, I think for indoor spots like this. It, it's really hard, I mean it's sort of like, oh we'd like them all in together but at the same token it, it really needed a little bit more, you know, two or three less in there would have been better than what they had but I mean, yeah. Um, it was incredible to see. Mm. Just a little bit hard to get back far enough to get some footage of it all. Yeah, I mean. So this is another original RPO, I think, the white one. Yep, lovely car. That's it. I actually seen car. that, I believe, up at their place a few years back. Oh, is that right. the one out of Tassie, the four door? It possibly. That one. I think that was his father's car for a while. I think that's the unrestored hardtop that was next to it as well. So this four-door, was this one of the... Oh, it's one of the prototype the, the cars. Prototype phase four, for want of a better name? Yeah, exactly. That's Joe Bartolo's car, it's a pretty cool car. I mean, that fact alone that we had the compliance to phase four and one of the, the three red ones in the in same there, place at yeah. once. So many XY bits on there, isn't there? Yeah, and there's some cool stuff like the vacuum tank and the the twin PCV valve booster on it. And I do apologise for um, my camera action on this one because I pride myself, but it was just about impossible. Mm. I didn't want to miss out. Yeah, I sort of realised that I was going to end up down this road as I was drawing the display. I mean, when you were there, it was okay, but at the same time, just, you know, so now I'm out the door, basically, trying to get a bit of... Um, yeah, and these doors were meant to be shut, so imagine if they didn't break the rules and open the doors. And then there was a row, I think, of four along this wall, mm. four XYs. That's another car I didn't get the opportunity to see. I didn't make it to this side of his display at all. Right. Hmm. Yeah, like having the having the position of head judge at a show like this and also organising and coordinating a lot of the show really means you don't get to... I'm going to say you would have spent a lot of time inside. I mean, I should have had a firefighter's vest on, to be honest, because yep. there was a lot of logistics happening the whole time. This is uh, one of our sponsors, Clancy's. They came with some pretty cool Mustangs and a lot of the police cars and, and there's the famous Phase 4. So, and I think that's going to pretty much round us out Dave because um, I did have a look to see what was last and of course the Phase 4 is just one of those, you know, you mentioned earlier about mm. the, the unicorn car, well, it's obviously one of those as well. Yeah, yeah, that's... Mate, I really appreciate that um, you've managed to come down after such a big week before to, to help me out with that because I'm sure it's going to make a way better show of it. And the, the show, this every two years, the Nationals? Every two years, different states. So where are you back to next time? Victoria. Yeah, back in Victoria? Yeah, it'll be at Shepherd at the next Nationals. Oh, okay, that'll be good. They're utilising the Move Museum down there too. Cool, so you should get good numbers there. Yeah, I'd, I'd say it's going to be huge. So thanks very much and thank you to everybody for watching and I hope you hung it out all the way through to the end. So many good cars, such a great event run by the clubs for the clubs. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, tick like. If you get an opportunity to ask a question, I'll make sure we get back to you with an answer. Body bye for now.